Welcome to Gay, the podcast <laughs> called Gay. <laughs> well, the host is good. But the topics don't have to be. Cheers, everybody. I didn't even Cheers. play it for Simon. <laughs> <laughs> the double takers. <laughs> I'm joined by some people on the couch who may or may not survive in the next 24 hours. <laughs> and you may see very recently on the news. <laughs> I'm Simon. And I'm Reed. And I'm incredulously angry. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Austin. Welcome to the podcast. So, isn't it weird that his name is Austin and where we're at? It's an Airbnb. Is an Airbnb <laughs> in Austin? <Texas. laughs> oh! I forgot about that part. So, why are you hosting this week? You want to explain that? Um. Yes, it's actually something that I believe Sir Isaac Newton uh, formulated. <laughs> A long time ago, called inertia. Uh, See, I am sitting like in this Mayans. chair, and a group of people came towards me and said, "We're doing a podcast." And I said, "I'm not moving." <laughs> so yeah, objects in place remain in place. Object right. permanence. It's yeah. a, in order what? to move, it has to be strong enough force. And I, I'm a hefty girl. Hefty girl. Yeah. I'll drink to that. Yep. Reed, Thanks hello. Hi. Who the fuck is this? Hi guys, it's Reed <laughs> coming at you live from not Florida. Isn't that crazy? Woo! In the flesh. Exciting. Yeah, not. Well, um... Now you won't break up on us. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? <laughs> we'll be back again. Right. Yeah. We should just put it in right there. Put it in. Okay. Yeah. Whether or not he puts it in is fine. <laughs> but yeah, Thanks, I just Barry. got here. Um, you did. We had to leave our house at three thirty this morning. Um. Really gross, uh, but we, my dad and I, got into the Austin Airport at like. But it builds character. Right? New, it does. It does build character. Um, I actually love. You know, I read somewhere that like rich people wake up at like four thirty in the morning. I'm That's just why practicing. they're rich. I'm just practicing for my like future. Shit, sure. <laughs> but I better start waking up at four thirty every day. God damn! I ain't gotta get that paper. We do have one more guest this week. We forgot to announce. Yeah. It's Brendan. What's Brendan! Up? Yay! <laughs> I'm here now. So, What's up? Brendan initially told us that he couldn't come to flo- to RTX. Tide Pods? Um, and we told question. him, no, you're coming. And so right. we brought him. Um, he's a little more uh, two dimensional. Rambunctious. Than right. uh, $20. $10, actually. Oh, yeah. yeah. She yeah. I saved money. Um, so you, you, you got it. Home? You got it. We got to yeah, cut corners when it comes to Brendan. <laughs> a Brendan group Especially Brendan. how sharp these corners are. You gotta cut this. Yeah, I could have done that better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could have. His parents also. So okay. he's here. He's here with us. He'll be helping host RTX as an ambassador. Um, I don't know if he'll have much to say, but um, he'll be here in, in spirit. He'll contribute just as much as he would if he were actually here. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. Dude, I don't feel so bad for almost making that joke about his parents. Almost. Almost. You almost. made the joke. <laughs> I saw. You can fill in the blanks. So I saw The Godfather. Really? Yeah. Still have never seen it. Um, me, me neither. I need to. Okay, well, tell us if we should watch it or not. Well, Marlon Brando. TJ, you're not in the I podcast. would <laughs> highly recommend... You're getting your hotel I would recommend, like, not having expectations that I did going into it. Um, it's just, like, widely known as supposed to be, like, one of the best movies ever made, and it said that it's about as good uh, as Citizen Kane and being that influential... And I just, like, I don't see it. Like, I can see why people would, like, really like it, but it's just, it's boring, you know? It's just, and, like, I, 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 I know what it's trying to do, and the spirit is there, but the execution is not. And I'm really sorry, Al Pacino, but, I mean, you probably should have mentioned something. Okay, so start, like, sort of contrasting that. How do you feel about after watching the Teen Titans Go movie? <laughs> It was better, yeah. Um, oh. It is better than The Godfather. There was actually a plot that kind of sought out to aim and meet certain, like, checks. So, I think that was just an all-around... I think there was... I think the plot was very vague, which was good, because it didn't take itself seriously. It, it felt like an actual episode of the show. It, yeah, just like a super long episode of the show, yes. which I wish that they were 30-minute long episodes, but I'm fine with a 15 long minutes long. Uh, yeah. An hour and 30 minutes. Like, yeah, like an hour and 30 minutes. minutes. So, I mean, it's not like one of the two-hour blockbuster things, but I, the, musical, really? the musical numbers really took me by surprise <laughs> the in this one. There was a musical number? Oh, like yeah. Michael, Michael Bolton was in it. Oh, my God. No way. Yes. 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 The thing is I love the, really... the Teen Titans rap was so lit, though. Uh, yeah, and they use it twice. It's great. It's a teen so lit. Teen Titans, Teen Titans, Teen Titans. 
That's not their words, not ours. Mm. Um, and it, it, who it he really, is? <laughs> I just I, I I would love to be one of those voice actors because they really to me have the same spirit as like the early '90s, late '90s uh, act, like voice acting they do for dubs and anime, yes. where people actually like do this kind of seriously and they actually take it like that they like and enjoy the work they do. It's yes. not just a stock role, yeah. and they just clearly are having fun, so we're having fun. Yeah. I do have a question for you. So do you think, back to The Godfather, yeah. do you think that you didn't like it because you watched it now? Like, if you had, like, watched it when it first came out, would you have appreciated I mean, it more? Or at least earlier, instead well, of right. putting it off. Certain, okay, there's a lot of things here. I'm not very old, so if I was younger, I would have appreciated it because I'm less mature than I am now. Mm-hmm. Um, if I watched it when it came out, I probably would have loved it even more because there would have been less to compare it to. Right. So I to say it's not, like, a maverick movie, like, an important influential movie is obviously false, but it's just... I mean, I've seen better, and I, I mean, that's just mm-hmm. the case. It's just, it's just I've seen it better. It set the standard, and there have been movies that have exceeded right. it. It's like people, t- you know, being, if, or I shouldn't say this is a huge deal, but if people like, don't like the first Star Wars movie, it's like, no, I get it, because it, it's lacking in things that have come after it, right. and some before it, but mostly after it, because they use it as a model, because it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a new type of movie, new type of storytelling that really, I think, sets a standard. Yeah. So, And also, like, people who still, like, hold The Godfather as, like, one of the best movies of all time probably look back at it with, like, a sense of nostalgia from when yes, they first saw it. for sure. So maybe they, like, look past some of the faults. Like, I, I think that's one of the reasons why it's really hard for me to perfectly and critically analyze the original prequel movies of Star Wars. Um, because I grew up watching those two, and I still absolutely love watching those movies. Like, it's a fun time for me to actually go back and rewatch those films. It's hard for me to genuinely joke about Jar Jar Binks being a bad thing, because as a kid, I loved him. Exactly, so exactly. Yeah. Like, I loved him. It, I went to the movie, like, so many times because I liked Jar Jar Binks and the marketing And sports. even even rewatching, I can see why people didn't like him, but I still... Misa don't. I, I still... <laughs> well, I know. I still kind of like him a little bit. Of course. But he's endearing. I mean, you can totally look back at movies with nostalgia and like enjoy watching movies and still like recognize their faults. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think it, I think that's why it's hard for me to to like put a number on it and realize. Like, I get look and I'm just like, okay, because I've, I've watched so many behind the scenes stuff about the movie and I'm like, oh, so that's why that scene was like. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's also say this though is that like no one's saying that the prequels are these phenomenal, most you know, impactful, most. You know, great movies. It's pretty much just distaste after watching the original trilogy and then getting to see that. Like, sure, absolutely. And so what, what I mean though is, like, when you say like it's hard to like say you're giving a fair response to it, I mean the reason I maybe I'm so critical of like The Godfather is because people put it up to such a high pedestal, mm-hmm. and so all you have is your nostalgia. Everyone else, like, yeah, screw the prequels, right? They yes, suck. Yeah. So I mean, like, I mean that it's just not uh, the same caliber. I think of dissidents because yeah. I mean no one's telling you that like, oh, you can't like the prequels. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, people just like think I'm not very good. And apparently, episode two is the most hated. I was yeah, episode. I, I always I thought think that episode, episode two is the worst. one. I so, worst. so episode one came. This is where I think episode two is the worst. Episode one came out and it wasn't good in my objective opinion. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then episode two came out and it was just as bad. But what makes it worse is that they didn't learn from any of the mistakes yeah, that's they made fair. in the first one. Well, there are also far, like, not only that, but they continue the same methodology as they do with the CGI, but for some reason it's executed even worse. Or, like, he takes that fake bite out of the fruit. Like, yeah. what is that, man? Why don't well, just give him a real he fruit? Hits his, yeah. He hits his head on, like, the door or whatever when as he's well. sneaking into the, the battle, uh, the droid plant or whatever where they're making all the... Right. It's been a while since I've seen it. No, yeah, there's a lot of different things, which I can understand. But I personally liked watching episode two over the first one. Uh, I think that the first one was really slow for me, and the best part, it's, it was sort of like Rogue One in that sense, where the best part was literally the last last half, of okay. the, or, or, or like the third act, if yeah. you will, know, of the movie. I, just, I, I remember in episode two, there was like a whole 30 minutes or something dedicated to... Uh, Padme and Anakin, right? Yeah. No, no. Fair it was. It was. Just, it seemed like a long it time. Too long. It was just them prancing him. in the grass and stuff. Yes. Yeah. 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 So like, this is really thing. bad. No. There. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Watching through that, I was like, okay, yeah, this is a little. There's bit no drama or intrigue to it. No. There's not. And I'm not sure certain if it was really chemistry between the actor. It's mostly I want to blame the writing. Oh uh, yeah. And but, the overuse of like. CGI. And, and I, ne- I don't. Too. Yeah, especially with episode two. But um, I, oh, man, I don't want to give Hayden Christensen a bad rap. Oh, I do. <laughs> I like 
liked him. I mean, okay, I, I liked him. I liked him in Star Wars. His other movies were not my oh, favorite. Oh, I hate him in Star Wars. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't know anything else he did. I don't think. He's I don't think Joker. you. Okay, you definitely. <laughs> you definitely wouldn't have gotten the same performance out of him uh, than you would have in anyone else. Anyone else would have had a completely different thing. But I thought just I like the, the whininess and everything. I don't know. I I, I think I hate. Hey, Chris I wanted Chris Anakin to be there. just like super passionate. Yes. But like. I don't know. I feel like Hayden Christensen uh, sort of try to be cool. I don't think. He, I don't well, think so. I don't think so. I think Kylo he. Ren. The way the way that I think about it is that well, with Kylo Ren, he went super emo. But I think with because I rewatch the movies and I think about it and I'm just like, okay, so this is him going through each motion and stuff like that, and 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 like really the dark side taking over him. Mm-hmm. Just seems kind I just of I just really didn't buy his anger when he went to kill the sand people. Yeah, you didn't. Not I. I mean, again, it's been a really long time since the movie, but what, from what I remember, it just he was angry for that scene, but not outside yes. that scene. Yes. Yeah, he was. Oh my god, and he was torn apart, especially after he told Padme what he did. I, I, I'll have to watch it again. I slaughtered them like yeah. animals, and I think that that was just a not just the men. Watch them with the him so and the children. See, like his perspective on it too. Okay. I feel like that'd be really fun. If, let, let's let's just watch them tonight. Let's just yeah. watch them tonight. I fucking Star Wars is. My my number one thing, man. Okay. Mm. Have you met Andy Blanchard? Who? Andy Blanchard? He a achievement hunter? No. <laughs> uh, Rooster 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 Rooster. He he's he's a huge lover of the prequels. So I think he'd get along with him. And Yu Gi Oh. Oh, that's my thing. Shinzo, <laughs> what the? I'm not gonna ask about it because it's not on the show. But I'll ask you later, TJ. <laughs> TJ's playing Fortnite in the he background. Is. <laughs> he's not doing very well. You have to do that five times. Okay, we, we don't have to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fortnite. Uh, no. um, How do you guys feel about Pokemon Go? I play Pokemon Go. Okay. We all play it. We all do yeah. play it. We just did a raid today. We did. That was my first successful raid. That's, That's sad. sad. It's my second successful raid. That's, well, so, here's I, the thing. You guys didn't do Zapdos Day? Uh, no. I fucking I, work. I live... I miss the uh, Squirtle. Somewhere. I live in Pokemon Go Central. Like, Disney World, Universal, there are literally Pokestops, gyms everywhere, but I only play when I'm there. I don't go all the time, so, like, when I'm at home, like, I'm not actively seeking You're it not out. Pokemon going. I'm, I'm just not. She my sister, Pokemon staying. My sister started, like, playing it again, um, and, like, her and my mom will go on walks every night, and they'll walk down to the pool, That's which cute. is a Pokestop. They'll loop around so my sister can get it twice, and then walk back. Uh, which I think is super cute. I just I'm only into it when people around me are playing. Yeah, yeah. that's what I I well, it's recently t- redownloaded with things it like the raids and like gyms and stuff. It's tough to do it alone. Yeah, just because like you either need to be going on like a busy day where there's gonna be a bunch of random people downtown mm-hmm. or with a bunch of friends. Right. Well, the like, campus downtown has a fuck ton of poke stuff. So. Right. I think they've done a great job of making it. Like th- there's more to do now, mm-hmm. and it gets people to come back and actually stay. Because yes. that was my biggest problem with the first one. There wasn't a there's lot. Just, there's nothing to do. Plus, all you had is the one generation. Right, and honestly, even from what I can understand, because I just didn't play during the second generation at all. But mm-hmm. when they got in the third one, I, I joined back in, mm-hmm. and I just couldn't help but think that every time that I play it, like, why am I just not playing the actual game? And I mean, it got me to play the other games. So that's nice, but you know, yeah. I, I I don't know. It's just I wish. I wish there was more to do even now, but at least there is something. And yeah. the fact that there are over 300 makes it, like, actually feasible. And I'm not just frustrated seeing only Geodude and only, like, Pidgey, Pidgey and Rattata. Like, yeah. And I, I don't know. I just I really wish that I could um, either have more stuff like Pokemon Quest, which I think is a phenomenal game uh, from its uh, incarnation. And it only loses the 150. It doesn't have any of the other ones, which is really interesting. Um, and then also, um, I love you know these new games that are coming. But you out. beat Pokemon Quest, right? I did. Yeah. I think that's the difference is that there's nothing to beat. With there's Pokemon no objective. Quest. Yeah. Yeah. You just collect it's something, something to really pass right. the time with, which is sort of like what a lot of phone uh, right it's apps like that like are. Mobile, mobile games are not. Like, I feel very similar about mobile games as I do about MMOs. I feel like there's got to be a Goldilocks situation that will make like a really nice game and mm-hmm. a really nice situation that no matter what the plot is, no matter what, it, 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 this is how it could function in a way that is repeatable, interesting, fun to play, and can get everyone to join. Like Clash of Clans style stuff going around. I wouldn't say that. 
So okay. that's the thing. As I say, that is not in the Bulldogs condition. Okay. I mean, because but, there were so many copycats. I played the Star Wars. Right, right. Surprise, surprise. And, but, I, I, I want to say that, like, it's not that, like, Gold, by what I mean by Goldilocks, it's not that it is, is effective and is popular. I mean that from a critical standpoint, it's actually good and enjoyable to play and not something that people can just kind of get addicted to. But there has to be, well, one, not something that people just get addicted to and also not something that just gets people's money. True. And, but yeah. also, like, for me, when I'm playing a game, I need an end goal. I can't just keep playing forever and ever and ever and just expect to, like, one day wait for more updates. Like, that's why I loved Pokemon games. Like, growing up, those are the only video games that I played. Yeah, pretty much. Because I I loved that I had this adventure to go on, and then, like, I could put it down for six months and play it again, and it'd be, like, experiencing it again for the first time. I have a adjacent question that I've actually been thinking about so very often. How Okay, so the real Pokemon games, um, and honestly, most of them, you play as, like, a 10-year-old. Mm-hmm. I was a 10-year-old. I was a 7-year-old. I was a 15-year-old. And wherever I am now, you don't ask my age, but um, I always thought that was weird, and I really wish that I wasn't 10. How, I, how old did you want to be? 15. I w- I'd want to be, like, an actual age where I'd be like, my kid can go on the subway alone, <laughs> oh, and I'm yeah, not going to yeah. worry about that. Yeah. Like, I just always felt like... Travel across the country. Or right. Like, for benefit of that, across the state. Right. But still. That's well, it's a different... I mean... Part of it, think, thinking of it in like the context of like the world that we live in, that's it super was a different weird. time. No, it's a different world. Well, it's also it's based in Japan, the Japanese culture, and I think that right. it, it is a little bit different. Honestly, if you look at like Hoenn, for example, everyone still, lives in small little hovels. If you think about it from like the time in 1996, people still let their kids go outside. And oh, go oh, most certainly yeah. not. Not to this level. Like the main thing is that this is you're traveling alone. What? To me, it seems like a very vast world. And it's a marketing scheme is that it's a, it's a big world. Mm-hmm. It's just, I think that 10 year old is just like, maybe I should just be a little older. 12. Make it like going to Harry Potter for your first year of age. Well, you know, actually, there is a Japanese thing about your first errand. And I think that is actually something that is in the first game is when you go to get the parcel and come back to Professor Oak. And it's actually supposed to be what it is is that you're, you're given this task of, of going to the next level of your maturity and your adulthood that you can handle a task like that. And um, it's just, it's interesting that, again, like if the world wasn't so big and monsters weren't like the theme, I think it would be more interesting and more, um, more immersive, I guess. Like, I just, the things that you do too, like, I mean, it would just make more sense if you were a teenager. And they actually do that, I think, in Pokemon uh, Black and White. I think you actually play as a 15 year old. Oh, it, yeah, you're a little bit older. Though. Also, though, like, the Pokemon games haven't grown up with the people playing them. I feel like that could be something really interesting. Like, you know, not that kids aren't still playing and enjoying the Pokemon games today, but, like, like the people who, like... version? Yeah, if, like, you play as an adult. Like, what if you play as the professor one time? Well, that's what Pokemon calls Get your own gym. Yeah! That'd be what really if cool. you're like, that'd Fuck, be really dude. cool. Fuck, dude, just imagine. Hire me. Misty <laughs> comes over to your house. You guys have a <laughs> big shit ever took you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> That's but not a man. <laughs> there's so many aspects of the world that we don't explore as the mm-hmm. person playing the game. Because, yeah, like, like, you, you maybe, maybe, maybe you play somebody who gets wrapped up in, like, Team Rocket or something. Right. Like, Let's play as the I bad wanna, guy. I want to yeah. be a Team Rocket. Like, as the. The games, the games are different in and of themselves, but it's still the same structure. Like as much as I love Pokemon, something different. That's okay. not Pokemon Go. That's what Pokemon Coliseum is, though. You play as somebody who like basically defects from the Team Rocket, and your goal is to collect the Pokemon that have been scattered, that have been turned into Shadow Pokemon, and you're trying to like purify them. I definitely didn't know there was more to Pokemon Coliseum than like. Just the battles. So Pokemon Stadium is just that. The okay. Pokemon Coliseum was like supposed to be like the spiritual successor. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have it in there, but it really is not the... I've never actually played that part of it. It's a storyline that's completely adjacent. It's actually not even made by the Pokemon team. Um, so there are some kind of, like, continuity issues, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But um, you play as an adult, and you play as somebody that kind of goes around and, you know, stops storyization. It's great. It's phenomenal. And your starter Pokemon are Umbreon and Espeon. Ooh. Yeah. Did it do well? I think it did fine, at least critically. I don't know about what it. Game was, what it's game console Cube. was that? GameCube. Okay. Yeah, that was the other thing is that because it was on um, a console, it obviously changes like kind of the demographic. Like, yeah, totally. Target, so. right. But it's great, and that's that's the way that you get Ho-Oh, and that's the way you get Lugia um, in the GameCube third generation because they didn't have a second gen uh, gen three. I am probably gonna get Pokemon Let's Go. I believe I will. I didn't think I was because I was gonna hold out to getting a Switch Pokemon game until like the. Actual yeah. next gen, um, 
But you know, I've been playing Pokemon Go, and I feel like I gotta do it. I think it'll be, because it's supposed to be like a Pokemon Yellow remake, right? Yep. Jesse and James are back. That'll be fun. The Maybe. power couple. I just feel like that's what made the game. <laughs> I mean, that's not a joke. Like, I, I truly think that growing up, if I had to like pick one thing that I'm like, wow, it's okay to be who you are, and I want to be as fun and cool and interesting and as much of a homosexual as Jesse. Um, that's what I wanted. Like, that's who I always wanted to be. And I just think it's very important in that dynamic. Like, they're just kind of outsiders. But they think they're so good. Mm. And I'm like, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> right. You yeah. a problem over there? No, I'm just making sure it's over. <laughs> Are you drinking a Corona without a lime? Um, yes. That's against the law. Who grabs your limes? DJ Warren Tech. We all did. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. 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 Yeah, but you're a Corona, so. so. They are my Coronas. My 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 Corona. <laughs> I also thought that, but I have the shame to not say it. Was that like humility? No the shame. No dignity. No shame. I like the way. Cheers. No dignity. Are we getting manicures? We should get manicures. I really want them to get manicures. Although, so manicures. not at the place nah, that we went to Both. last year. Last year, um, my friend Becky and I. We went. <laughs> she was um, all of our friends. All of our friend Becky and I. We went to go get manicures at this place on South Congress, and like literally, I was like cut by my manicures and like started dating. Like Becky's the person. <laughs> no, who, no. <laughs> it was just Sorry. a fucking banana. The person who was doing Becky's nails left her to go do someone else's. Like, while she was half done, oh my god, it was atrocious. Oh my god. Becky left the nastiest one star review ever. It was so white mom, can I talk to the manager? But yeah. Oh yeah, it was not. uh, She definitely likes Yes. (laughs) She's just that person in general. She always wants to talk to the manager. I love it. I wish I had that type of energy. So I have kind of nubs at the moment. Okay. Can I still benefit from a manager? Yeah. Yes. They'll buff them up or something else like that. I don't know. I want to get both. Let's do both. I think I should get, well, depending on how much it is. Right. No. Do they come like, are they like combo probably, packs? There are. It's probably yeah. uh, less pricey. I mean, I obviously I don't know. I mean, it, since it's a combo We're waiting on a recommendation for just a manicure right, and then yeah. a pedicure. But um, we'll find out. And like, it's not like you're doing anything expensive like acrylics or anything. So. Very true. That would just be the basic shit. Oh, yeah. I was going to get acrylics. So you do it! Out. Do it! <laughs> I want to be a click clacker. I've, I've recently um, <laughs> delved into the world of fake nails. Oh. Um, I started with glue-on nails. You're I, watching claws, aren't you? <laughs> always. <laughs> um, I didn't like the glue-ons because I just felt like, I don't know, maybe Isn't I didn't a, apply them right. Like, okay. a, like a type of molecule, a glue-on? Maybe. I think you're asking the wrong person. <laughs> like a, Me and an science astronomy thing. don't mix. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, yeah, I didn't like glue on. Okay. Stick on, I'm liking a lot better. Is that what you have now? That's what I have right now. I'm yummy. What's I the difference know. between glue and stick? So, okay, glue, Does it just have, like, an adhesive versus, like, you actually yeah, glue so on? Yeah, so glue on, you, like, it comes with the nails and the glue. You pick your sizes, you lay them out, and you apply glue to your nail and then to, like, the fake nail, and you, like, press it and hold it. Uh-huh. The stick just comes, like, I have them over there, I can show you later, but and they just, it have, like, you just peel it off. And you hold it down and peel and go. It. And the the adhesion is like um, activated by you pressing down on it. So the mm. longer you press, the longer it'll stay. Oh, damn. Yeah. And so these, I'd like to get activated by being pushed down. <laughs> 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 They're like buttons. <laughs> these have survived a lot longer than the other ones have. Like okay. I went to work and none of them fell off. So oh. yeah. wow, now you can do anything. I know. <laughs> Admirable. Admirable. I'm just like really strong. High or like low? No, I just like I'm going through my fake nail journey and like it's really admirable. Strong. Str- like the theory? Strong theory. Yeah. But yeah, no, strong! Just the theory! Strong! A strong theory! <laughs> Let's go ahead and bleep that out. <laughs> Please. Um, yes, I'll... give Simon more work. I'm Horses. the editor. Horses, so... are hot. Horses are hot. Get ready. Put the will be right back in, right now. <laughs> I'll play it twice. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. <laughs> um, I so I'm still facing the issue of my 3DS is in Japanese. 
How? Okay, please explain. So I, I lived in Japan after I went to high school, and I was like, what a great time, you know, fun sick of time for me, let's get a 3DS in this wonderful country. And I thought, wow, since I'm going to be here, I'm going to be fluent, I can definitely, you know, play this in Japanese and everything. And of course, they wouldn't region lock this, so there's obviously going to be some other options, especially for, you know, uh, the gaijin that are there, you know. And it's not, it's only in Japanese, there's no other option, and also it does not play non-Japanese games. So I have to order them from Japan, get them shipped here, um, which costs about 60 bucks to ship, so it's like I'm paying twice for a 3DS game. Um, <laughs> oh my god! And for the most part, I have can't Have you done play. that? Well, yeah, that's how I play all, all of uh, Animal So you've Pro. been doing that? Yeah, but why didn't you just... Buy a new one. Trade in and buy a new um, one. I felt I was far too in and I had all these Japanese. I mean, especially after you had already started fallacy. purchasing them. I know, it, it wasn't a fallacy in this case because I had bought these games and I, I had already gotten Pokemon X and Y. I got Pokemon. Oh, uh, you so already I mean, had these games when you were in Japan? Yes. Okay, so yes. You, didn't, you didn't pay the double thing. For no. The, okay. Um, Here's the solution just flying to Japan. Right. That's what you know. For $1,000. Can, yeah. you play, can you play the Japanese games on like a normal 3DS? Have you tried? No, you cannot. It's huh. Mm-hmm. And it is interesting because I can. I, it does it's a really good tool to help me practice and learn. But it's very difficult because there are some options that get blocked or transferred or have different connotations. So like for example, um, uh, Fire Emblem uh, If, or as it's called here, Fates. Um, it probably would be a little bit different for me to play it in English because I could really kind of understand the translation and a lot of the. Things they talk about because it's a period piece are feudal Japanese jokes and feudal Japanese ways of speaking. So mm. I'm like, wow, they did not talk about that in my one-on-one class. <laughs> um, okay, all right, yep, yeah, cool. Um, but it's it, it's fun. It obviously, however, makes it so I don't buy games like at all. Um, and have I gotten better in Japanese? Probably. Do I feel like I have? No. Mm. So but I mean, it's just it's a constant struggle and. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to wait till they get the next handheld game. It's the Switch, mm-hmm. which I bought, but, like, I just feel like now I'm kind of stuck with this 3DS game, which they still, I think, make games on. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay. It's, it, this one's lasted a while. Mm-hmm. I would just stay with the Switch, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, not going to throw away the Switch or anything, but right. I just, I mean, this is really my, I guess, takeaway from this is that I think it's so strange that they've region locked it. I think it's so peculiar to me because I just what what's the deal? You know what what like with what, airline food? Like yeah, that. with airline food, with Japanese games. <laughs> I just you know, all of them, all of the list. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and the other thing that gets me too is that usually on the English sure. version, and this is true. Yeah, I'm gonna ask oh if you noticed God. that it's like a Japanese style on this. And we were just <laughs> talking. about <laughs> Sponsor. Or it could be Chinese. Does it say blue ribbon? Oh, you bomb. Yep. Oh, was, it, was it? Uh, it's Aoi Ribbon. Or yeah, Aoi Ribbon. Uh, Biru. Biru. Ribbon. Yep. So that's cool. Blue Ribbon. Aoi Ribbon. But um, wow. I was gonna say that uh, the English version will have other options for my language learning too. So I can do German. I can do Italian. I can do mm-hmm. French, Spanish, Japanese. And most seems to only <laughs> offer English as an alternative. Mm-hmm. But like, it will just be like the voices. It won't be like the interface. Mm-hmm. So oh. it'll be like, oh. So, <laughs> um, it trial by fire though, man, is not what life's about. Right. What an experience. What an experience. Well, I got I got my 3ds like a, a while ago, and I got it. When we, we used to go up to New Hampshire for Thanksgiving every year when I lived in Massachusetts. You know, it was like a hop, skip, and a jump away. Yeah. Um, and I got it there on Black Friday because New Hampshire doesn't have any sales tax. Wow. So I didn't have to pay tax on it, which was really. I don't get how a state. The IRS should not come for you. <laughs> Sorry. They probably have like insane property. Yeah, taxes. Yeah, the property tax is very, very high. Yeah. Would you ever want to live there? Um, uh, we don't. We just visit it. Okay. I got my ukulele it's... in New Hampshire. Ooh. I did a lot of big purchases. We got, we got our TV in New Hampshire. We got a lot. What of if drug dealers like taxed it too? Wouldn't that be funny? Funny, haha. Maybe not. <laughs> funny. I'm gonna cut a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Very funny, yeah. Very funny. Hilarious, actually. <laughs> they advertise forty-four dollars, and you get there, and it's like forty-five, twenty. You're like, what the fuck happened? I was about yeah, forty-four. That's exactly. the thing that, like, most people, I think, would agree would be beneficial if just like tax was included in the price that they put on the tag. Yes. Yeah. It's just yes. like, why don't we do that? 
Everywhere else, sometimes the, world the does. tax changes though too. It does. They just change, change the tax. It's yeah. a piece of paper. Um, we love Do you know how much paper costs? What? We don't want to waste paper. We, we love should have files. digital tags. You know, you know digital what though? Tags hey, I, hey, I, this is probably why it is. Is that it shows from like location to location, this place isn't changing the price. So someone would be like, oh, this one's forty-five. This one's forty-eight or fifty, whatever. And maybe like for any, any item, there might be some like cahoots of like, having it marked up in a certain area, oh, and you can't guarantee that. Okay, I suppose. But that's not good enough reason. But that's that might be is the reason. Gotcha. Well, it's just like how I feel. I think I'm totally on board with our metric system, even though it's crazy, because it allows us disgusting. It allows us to um, have poetic ways of talking about things. Like for example, I can never say I'm you know, millimetering my way towards this person. I want to inch towards them. Mm-hmm. And otherwise you wouldn't have that. And, you know, without us having those, you can't you can't say that. Yeah, without us fucking pioneering the fucking way. That's true. <laughs> but second of all, if you don't believe me there, I think Fahrenheit unequivocally is absolutely perfect. And I think other people should use Fahrenheit. I agree. Because it's based on our temperature, like our body temperature, mm-hmm. from zero to, you know, 100 and not Real water. Quick. Why don't we use Kelvin? Um, because there's a lot of negatives. Total, total joke. Okay. Totally joking. Right. Okay. But you can't go negative in Calvin. Can you? No. No. But, like, you would, I'm sorry, it would be too big. You're right. Yeah, the number would be, like, in the thousands. It's, like, Because the lowest, I think, I think like, <laughs> yeah. Cool. <laughs> I, I should start saying that. People are like, what? It's like, you're exaggerating. <laughs> like, <laughs> it should be, like, you can't. Calvin. Like, you'd be Jimmy Neutroning is what you'd be doing. Yeah. Oh, yes, sodium chloride. <laughs> you know what's interesting about Jimmy Neutron? He was like never really physically bullied the way that I think I would have You know what? He, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would have really beat the shit out of him. <laughs> what? I said I would have beat the shit out of him. No, I would have, yeah. Absolutely. Much like I was. Yeah. He's pretentious. Pretentious? Are you kidding me? Get out. Get, first of all, why are you not skipping grades? Yeah. yeah. Plus, get skipping? a real fucking dog. Why Loser. are you not Jimmy Hauser? And he wonders why his friends are socially enough. Right. Uh, what? Out <laughs> Planet Sheen. Thoughts and opinions. Uh, I think like I had, episode and I was like, this isn't for me. It was <laughs> so it bad. was so weird. The only episode that I liked was when there was like an alien that was supposed to resemble Donald Trump and he had like an, oh. an apprentice episode or whatever and he's like, you're discharged. And it was Are you implying that to me that Planet Sheen is the reason the twenty sixteen well. election is Yes, what it is? Yes, it wasn't the Russians, it was Sheen. Ultra and Lord hacked the DNC. So angry. Run DMC. <laughs> I'm never gonna get over it. Like our entire I mean, lives, would you? I think our entire, like specifically our entire lives, are gonna be in reference to this period of time. Yeah. Could you imagine having to take like AP Gov now? Right. Which, what is that? Like the AP government, like the class like, in high school. No. What is the first part of that? Can you imagine having to AP? take it? Having to take it, like having no, to take what, that what class. What is AP? He's dumb. <laughs> like, but the like, class is so no more former running back for the Vikings. Last year, they added um, Obergefell v. Hodges, which is like the gay marriage case. They added that on the exam. Oh. So now, like all of these new Supreme Court cases, all these travel bans, all these things that are happening oh are going to be on the exam. Like that's going to be so much. Wow. Probably in a like like the, 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 the cupcake, maybe, but I don't uh, know. No, definitely bakery. Yeah. That, that would oh like the, yeah, the the, the, um, the one cake. cake. Yeah. yeah. How arguably irrelevant, though. Like you know, when I think about EP government, I think let's talk about the fundamentals, which yes. I, really are fundamental stuff. I, you could argue these are things, but these are like modern fundamentals. Like they will become fundamental in twenty years. But at this moment, we're still kind of figuring it out. I mean, but like my AP Gov teacher was like when Obergefell v. Hodges was on the exam, she was floored. She oh, yeah. she did not expect it to be on there at all because because of that reason because when you're taking classes like that, you're learning about the foundation, you're learning about the history. Yeah. But like this is history in the making. Mm-hmm. Where like I think that part of the the reason why at least I don't know how this works in other states, but in Florida, you have to take up to graduate is because they want to give you perspective no, we, on what you're going into. The, not civics. What is the class that we had to take? A government and politics. Go Pope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's the same class. It's yeah. the same class. And econ. You have to take gov and you have to take econ to graduate. Right. Yeah. yeah. You gotta learn how to invest in them stocks. We also had a class called Take Charge that you had to take. You're take basically teaches you how to do your taxes. I didn't have to do it. And I don't know how to do my taxes. Why <laughs> is that not a thing in Florida? That's no. genius. It's new. 
That's it was so only a semester weird. long though, so it wasn't enough. I still don't know how to do my taxes. Was no, it was a whole bunch of adulting things ham fisted into a semester. Why would teach me how to change a tire? Teach me how to like cook things. Yeah. Like teach me adult stuff. Well, there skills. is a class for that. But oh, nobody man. takes it. Yeah, I know, but like teach me how to like cook something simple. Yeah, like teach required. me a bunch of adulting things because I'm about to be on my own and I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, you know, the thing that really got me, too, is that we have this really, like, where we're from, we have a very... I like to announce our sponsor, Blue Apron. <laughs> <laughs> we have a really like, privileged amount of money and curriculum, and we're very much of a pro- progressive district. And the worst part is that, like, the other places that are far less privileged and have a lot less money and people that probably need this more than us, but we can Google anything, and we know that we can do that, um, they have nothing. Like, how we're, like, we're going to have this entire generation of people who won't be able to handle things the way that we can. And it's not actually because of that ex- specifically, but like, what do we um, do? <laughs> so I went, my, I've been to three high schools. I went to one in Massachusetts for freshman year. I went to two, uh, I went to one in um, Jacksonville, Florida for two years. And then I just graduated from um, one in Orlando. And the one in Orlando um, is, I think it's Title IX. It's a Title IX school. So like everybody who went there was like so poor that um, you, everybody was enrolled in the free and reduced lunch program, meaning that no one had to pay to take the SAT or the ACT, nobody had to pay for any college applications. Wow. Um, every fee to join any sport, to join any like band program, music program, art program, was waived. You didn't have to pay for it. Like The band didn't have to pay for their own uniforms. Like All of that was waived. That experience was so different. Because like, the school that I went to in Jacksonville was like super rich, privileged. Sorry. <laughs> I love it super like rich privileged area and to go from that to like a different kind of environment so eye-opening 95 percent hispanic that school is wow that I went I mean, to like, that's the main issue too is that it's so unbelievably hispanic kind of yes <laughs> it's skewed towards minorities and people mm-hmm. who are you know socioeconomically uh oppressed mm-hmm. yeah and like our school we had a distinct chinese population yeah. And I say that, you know, both as an interesting factoid of there our is, There is a lot of, uh, at least, it, d- Asians well, in Well, let's, in let's the Confucius uh, Institute. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so they're actually, the population density of Chinese uh, immigrants on a map of the U.S., it's the east and west coast, and there's two dots in the middle, and that's Lincoln and Omaha. Hmm. But, like, when I, when I told people where I was going to high school, like, I, I worked at a pizza place over summer. And, like, those people would went to, like, the, the rich white kid schools in Orlando, and I told them that I was going to Colonial, and they were like, I'm so sorry for you, like, why are you going there, you're going to have such an awful time. Because I, was, I wasn't I was zoned for the high school that I went to, I was in a magnet program, Yeah. Um, so they were like, well, why aren't you just going to the school that you're zoned for, like, you're not going to like it there, but, like, that was the most welcoming community that I'd ever been to. And, like, I've, I've been in so many, I've moved all over the place, I've been to so many different high schools, like, that community of kids who just are I wouldn't say like vulnerable but just are like so willing to like let people in was like something that I was not expecting to find. People people made it seem like I was going to get like beat up and my stuff stolen and it was just like such a negative stereotype about the school just because like everyone who went there was And that's just what fucking high schools do about each other. Like I East was supposed to be the preppy high school or whatever but I find that Southwest is is more preppy than true. we are. Well, yeah, at Southwest, you actually had to pay for stuff. At our school, we didn't have to pay for anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, obviously, you had to pay, like, if you were in, like, a cheerleader or, you know, you're in equipment, you have to pay, like, certain uh, facility fees and mm-hmm. uniform fees. But, like, the extracurriculars, like, FBLA and everything, you just, it's free to join. Huh. It's great. Yeah, no, I went from paying a $50, like, fair share fee to join theater and then paying to go to district competition and paying for all this stuff nice. to paying literally nothing. I had to pay to go to like state competition. Right. That's because that was ridiculously expensive. Right. But like districts was paid for, like my sheets was paid for, like literally everything I needed was yeah. paid for. It's such a horrible theater program. We didn't do anything like that. No. Really? Like, no what? competition or anything? We, the only competition we do is for one, one act. And it was okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did competition for actual plays? Yes. Yeah, so um, Florida is thespian. And you're what you're thespian troupe. Frank. Yeah. See, like that just start, got started getting sort of started after we graduated. Got it. Well, Florida State Thes- Festival is the largest gathering of high school thespians, I think, I mean, either in the country or in the world. Like, it's huge. Florida thespians are split up into districts because there's so many of us. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, the same way that RTX takes over downtown Austin, we take over downtown Tampa. I mean, is it different year. than the international thespian 
uh, society festival in Lincoln, Nebraska, which we've never gone to. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I, I think it's the same organization. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because like I, w- I had like a troop number. We had like yeah, we technically had troop number, but we never. We I didn't know what it was until after I graduated. Right. Yeah. Interesting. I never turned in my hours because I was a lazy piece of shit. Yeah. Well. Were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm better. I'm better now. Or so you think. So you think. So you think. I am a lot better now. I actually turn some things. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we thinking about on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? Yeah, what I was going to say. RTX, RTX. The Double Takers. Podcast. 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 <laughs> um, are you guys, like, how are you feeling? Are you guys excited? Are you guys nervous? Um, nervous. Uh, both. Yeah. Like. Um, yes. Might I suggest the Krabby Patty. Which I've never about. That's the second part of the joke. I know. Okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I feel like I have an idea of what I want, of like what is going to happen. Why don't we ask but it's Brenda? just, it's, I've been to RTX so many times and I still feel like I'm going for the first time because of what we're doing. Yeah. But I, also I relate to that a lot. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you've been to RTX so many times. Yeah, I've actually been here every year. Yeah. Lucky. You're probably Apparently 535 Nick on the first <laughs> And um, I don't know. I'm just, yeah, I mean, we were just talking about this in the car on the way uh, back to the Airbnb from Home Slice. Like, it doesn't feel real. Like, I know that I'm here, and, like, obviously I'm, I'm hanging out with people that I see for a week a year. So, but you're like, just disassociating. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. Well, relatable. Um, <laughs> but no, it just doesn't feel like it's RTX because it's such a, a new capacity that we're attending this event right. in. And, like, we're going to see parts of the convention center that we've never seen before. Yeah. Like, um, we're going to we go ha- behind the stage and see everything is held together with scotch tape and brass <laughs> I, I, I think that's what's going to be really interesting, just because, especially at least each year that I've gone, you've had two years' experience as a guardian right. and everything, so but I, each I, I, year I, I, that I've gone, it's been a different thing. I've been regular, uh, or at least, you know, the first time I was regular, I was like, okay, I can do whatever. And then the second year I was regular, and I was like, okay, now I know that I can't do and see everything. So I had a better experience, and then I was a VIP, and now I'm an ambassador. So every time it just moves up, so maybe next year I'm just going to be part of everything. (laughs) I mean, that's the same for me. The first year I went as like a regular attendee, and I had the mentality of, oh, I'll be able to meet everyone that I can meet. Mm -hmm. And then I was capped out of signings, and I was like, okay, so now I get it. The next year I went as VIP, like, uh, and that was my, I'm going to meet everybody that I possibly want to meet Mm -hmm. and I met everybody that I wanted to meet at that point and then the next year I I was VIP again but I realized that like for me at least the convention was less now about seeing staff members because I I, for the most part met most people that I wanted to meet and it was more about spending time with my friends it was more about seeing panels it was more about like walking the expo hall which I didn't do that much that first two years well, yeah it's fucking crazy right and then the, the, the next year I didn't even need a VIP pass because like I didn't there was, there was, it was no rush to get in line anywhere right because, because of the stuff that you were doing and part of the fun is waiting in line right that's meeting different meet. people and shit like that. Yeah, that's how you that's meet. meet. <laughs> However, I don't want to wait in the sun, so that's why I want the VIP pass. <laughs> Especially the platinum, because I gotta have the VIP party. Isn't that right, Brendan? Yes, Cameron. Yes. I wonder where the VIP party is gonna, or the platinum party is gonna be, because like last year it was at an outdoor venue, mm-hmm. and that was kind of iffy because it was almost gonna rain. The year yeah. that I went, it was a two-level venue, so mm-hmm. there was like. An indoor part on the first floor that had like a bar, and then, then up top. I think up they, it was, top, I think it was it the was same like place. A, a patio. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. it was the same place. The, that was fun. The place, well, the place last year had an indoor part right next to the outdoor part, but that was only for like staff and stuff to like get drinks, so they wouldn't have to wait. Huh. And like, because like the lines for the drinks uh, were like always long, yeah. so like the staff could like duck into the, the other part and just get what they wanted, and then come back out and hang out with fans. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. So I wonder, I wonder if it'll be in the same spot or somewhere new. It'll be somewhere new. I would assume so because then people can't show up. I hope that it's at Hooters. You never know. I never know. When you're on the events team, platinum party at Hooters. At Hooters. Yes. Yeah. All on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, always open that. is now 18 and up instead of the... Yeah, they are changing so many events I don't know how I feel about that. Because like, then the VIP part... I don't know, man. The VIP party was it's all ages. A bar. It about. was all ages, exactly. But then they were at a bar and there's like drinks and shit like that. But the VIP so. party was at a bar the year I went. It I know. It 15. It's true. I know. Which just feel, It just feels weird. They just put X's on my hand. They called it a day. Yeah. I mean, it could be the venue. Yeah. No. Well, I also, I also know rain is kind of small. Like, the indoor parts are kind of small. But then there's like an outdoor back... 
patio yeah, area. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. I just feel like if there's a lot of people there uh, who can't buy drinks, how is the bar gonna make money renting out their whole night? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Why is the comedy night eighteen? Plus? Well, that's what I want to know. That doesn't make any sense to me. Wait, the comedy night? Is 18 plus? 18 plus? Most of the time, it's going to be 18 and It's probably just the comedy night. Where, where's the comedy night? Is it at the... What are they doing? It's not an open mic, is it? Bin? No, it's like oh. kind of funny. Um, and it's a couple of people from Screw Attack. You know, like they're um, putting out that new Archie doc about like the guy from Screw Attack who like wants to be a stand-up comedian. Like he's performing and then they're getting like a couple of people from Achievement Hunter, a couple of people Did from you just oh, sell shit. the comedy night by saying that it's kind of funny? No. The name of one of the <laughs> groups. Oh, okay. That's insane. I like. I was like, damn. If there's like an open, because I was, I wanted to check and see if there's some open mic shit that I might be able to. But that's that's during the same time as always open mixer and Philly. If that's all happening. I should look that up. Saturday open night. mic Austin. If there's something to mine, I might go do something. Oh, shit. We're gonna go see eighth grade. I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. Oh, Is really down to do that? I'm so, the down. reviews down. have been. Bo Burnham has been like one of my favorite uh, personalities I since I knew what he was in 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, like I didn't, I didn't know what he was. Oh no, 2014. It was 2014 because mm-hmm. I know I uh, like I was a senior. Uh, you didn't know him until you were a senior, right? Like I was behind. I was behind. You're behind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw his what special like after what came out in 2012, while. right? I've known him since the YouTube days, so I don't even know if he had really a, a stand-up. I found him on Vine. That's how I found him. Oof, he would hate you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of my first things that I did see of him was Vine, but I didn't know who that was because I was like, "Can I get a number three? And then he drove off with a big number three, and like you know those yeah. two. Mine and then the... I stumbled upon him, and I didn't put two to two together. It was the same person uh, in Vine. I was the, the only thing that is a pussy. A, a really, really good book. book. <laughs> he has certainly been around. I think since probably two thousand. Yeah, no, oh, yeah, like, he's been around forever, but... No, um, and he was on the H3 podcast, and they were talking... He talked about, like, how he, yeah, how he lives, like, in YouTube and watching all these obscure yes. videos and how he hates the, the current yeah, state yeah, of yeah. YouTube and everything. Well, everybody else, like, hates yeah. the current state of YouTube. Well, of course. But because he, it, it yeah, caters right. to the people that it gets views from and then also people that don't need the views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you watch people like Danny Gonzalez and Drew Gooden on no. YouTube? No. So they were, like... You know, people who started online, yeah. who then, you know, the road work ahead guy. That's Drew Good. Right, right. He's, he's funny, though. He's really funny. Um, and then they started creating YouTube videos where a, a lot of their content is, like, criticizing other people's content. Um, but, you know, like, doing Oh, it, like the reacts, how everybody else is pretty much doing... I know, like, a react... Like, it's funny. It's, like, good content. It's like items. Content. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they're talking about, you know, people on the trending page all the time, like the Dobre Brothers... Like people, people of that nature who just the content is just bad. Yeah. Right. Like so much of the the daily vlog content is fake, and it's so obviously fake that people are in such a crunch to produce content that they're not putting effort into it anymore. Yeah. And that's what makes me sad. You know, like what happens to the days when you worked really hard on a YouTube video and you put it out and you were like really proud of it? Jenna right. Marbles is still doing that. I'm throwing it out there. I, you pop back She's- in. She's consistent. Yeah. She's a gem. I don't know. She made a video that was like dogs eating popcorn ASMR. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I feel like that is a personal issue. <laughs> and she'll be first to admit, especially with her thoughts on Avocados video. 15 minutes long. You know, 50% longer than her normal videos. Uh, she will have some days. You know? And that she's very human in that regard. And she's not selling herself yeah. in a way like... Yeah, I would say like you're gonna have some things that you're not gonna be proud but of. She's you consistent. Aren't. Yeah, and so you're gonna right. have that, but that's. But she's not. She's not like, and she's consistently good, not she's consistently good. bad. Like those daily yes. vlog channels yes. who are just so like putting so much pressure on themselves to make something interesting happen that yeah. you get situations like Logan Paul, yeah, which are just terrible. You terrible, know, like terrible. the people who put themselves in front of the camera and just do that, like the all right, guys, and they arm swing and everything else. <laughs> You, you know, you know the yeah. look. You yeah. know the look of those vlogs. And it's just, it's, 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 look. it's sad. Yeah, it's like, oh, sad. it's like, I got the new shoes. Let's see what they look like at the full outfit. <laughs> There's this guy that I followed on Tumblr about like four or five years ago, I feel like. Mm-hmm. And he would like post stuff like, oh, like, like this or blog this and I'll follow everybody or whatever. And he like started trying to make like a Twitter, YouTube channel and stuff for it. And he like made this Tumblr, or this uh, YouTube video about like, I'm coming out or whatever. And then like, all of a sudden it just disappeared. And whenever he would like do those things, they would never follow through with it, and you would never like actually follow anybody. 
Um, and he just came back and was trying it again under a different name, but it's working this time. And everyone sure. like, remembers it as just like, what the crap? Like, you were just like such a big tool. Also made some pretty racist tweets. So, like, there's that. And those are Fire like, James Gunn. Gun. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 What are, can we talk about that for a second? Yeah. What, James Gunn? Did you guys see what the, the, like, the cast? The Disney cast James Gunn. We watched, we watched the Franco yesterday. Uh, wow. Wow. Like, well, first of all, it's like, I have no sympathy for Disney because, like, there's no way they didn't know about that when they hired him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, the only reason it's a problem now is because... People have uncovered it. Well, no, it's, it's been uncovered. He never hid anything. Yeah. The only reason it's a problem now is because Disney wants to be like, uh, hey, we're PC. Hey, guys, we're, we're the progressive. PC. We're PC. We're progressive. Okay. Um, but but, but it's, they, it's really, it's just like, well, if you were really like that, then you wouldn't have hired him in the first place. And if you were really like so, that, you, why would you still have, you know, like a... Right. Like, and then there's been Dumbo with the Jim Crows or whatever else like that. I can't... Yeah. You, they, you know, I mean, history the main of, like, thing racial... Too, is that like at what point are we not giving people the ability to grow as humans? Right, because, and it was like, so long is, ago. It, he, and he is so unequivocally apologetic and thorough in his apology. So Shane Shane Dawson is a really good example of this too, in that yeah. his content, like in early YouTube, was really, really awful. Offensive. He did blackface, he like it was just not good. He made an apology and people forgave him for it. What I wanna know is where do you draw the line between like Forgiving someone and saying no, you can't grow and you can't change. I think everything, I think it, everything should is like contextual and stuff too. Like, what was the purpose that it was in? Like, how misunderstood was it? Were they? Uh, I mean, were there's they, no were misunderstanding. They, he tweeted some pretty awful. Well, quotes. what's still, what's still, but like, would you? Uh, is it like a, a, a case of ignorance or? Because I think with a case of like, well, he has he has come out and said a lot, like it's fucking bullshit. Like, like James Gunn came out and said that the only reason I tweeted those things were for shock value and to get a reaction out of people, mm-hmm. and I I, I realize that's not a sustainable career path for comedy, and so that's not something that uh, I'm proud of. How, did he delete them, or were they? No, no, I don't think he deleted them. He might have gone back and deleted them. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing. It's like so I, I can't speak for how sincere his apology was or anything because like I don't know him personally, but like to show that you've grown and that you've changed, wouldn't you go back and delete it? I don't mm-hmm. think so because. It's specifically one, it's eight years ago, and I know that I'm not willing to go back and delete specific things from that long ago, too. I think that if you were to delete them in this moment, it would almost be seen of him, like, trying to cover it up. Trying to hide it, yeah. And so there is that element of, I think, that you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. And really the only thing you can do is be very outspoken about it and just be like, hey, I'm acknowledging this, this is here, and, you know, I just want to be thorough about it. And, you know, even what you're saying, I would say, from what I read, he was even more on top of it and being like, regardless of its sustainability, like, this is just not funny. And this is just offensive, it's crass, it's just not relevant, and, you know, that, that's just the case. The other thing, too, though, is that it's not that he tweeted out opinions that were bad. It wasn't that he tweeted out any sort of, like, harming, damning thing. He just right. basically said a, a dead baby joke on a higher level than that. And so it's like, that's not funny, you shouldn't have said that, and blah, blah, blah. But, like, again, it's not like somebody saying, I think this minority is bad, or the reason, the problem. Yeah, and, like, we're not, we're not born, like, knowing... Right. Everything and how to be politically correct and all that. I used to. Do you remember that the girl who post like did that stand up comedy routine about um, the nail salon with like that yes. really really racist? Yeah. Just talking there. about that earlier. Yeah. I I used to quote that all the time. I thought that was so funny until like I went back and realized that like mm-hmm. obviously that's not funny at all. Yeah. Um. But like you know like but you laugh. if you, you can't don't take back that laughter. Stop. <laughs> if you don't give other people the opportunity to like grow and learn then. People are going to just, like, hate what we stand for, right? Like, right. you have to give people the opportunity to make those mistakes and learn from them, or else they're not going to learn. Yep. Yeah. So, on that topic, like, accents, are they bad to use then? I don't that's know. Exa- exactly, because that's know. like, what... Because I, I, I had somebody the other night apparently get, like, have a super dry uh, set on stage at one of the open mics at Duffy's, uh, and he was using... He, he's a Mexican guy, and he was using a French accent. There was a French guy in the crowd who didn't. He apparently didn't appreciate it. And I'm like, well, what's the problem with that? Because we still allow Italian accents or whatever. You know, the Mamma Mia. We still allow like really I, fucking when I hear, le- leprechaun accent. I go like, well, I mean, still, but you. Say, it's but it's something you that you say. He's like, oh, how do you do? You know, that's Irish. And it's yeah. like a Mamma Mia. It's like, oh, Italian. It's, Again, I think that like the main issue from this kind of standpoint is it's the racism in the sense that if you rob them of the agency 
that they deserve as people? Like, is the joke about them as a person, and you're like performing this as a character, or mm-hmm. is it like you're just kind of blatantly being like the the joke is that I'm racist? Because like I my biggest pet peeve is usually Asian accents because mm-hmm. they're usually not funny. Mm-hmm. Usually a also not done very well, so it's yeah. even more offensive. And three, there's just like no actual depth of comedy to it outside of it's somebody that is actually Asian that is talking about a relative because that's actually how they sound and what they do. And there's just a certain intent in the way that they say it, and that's why it's funny. But, you know, when it comes to, like, a French accent, I think that's more of a hit or miss because, I mean, I'm sorry, French guy. Like, who are you to be oppressed by this? Like, if I'm not making fun of you for being stupid and not being able to pronounce my English correctly. Yeah, and not eating enough, motherfuckers. Uh, okay. not. But, so then, because I play D&D. Of course. Right. And so I'm the DM and I have to use I use a plethora of different voices. I have used different Asian voices and stuff like that. Is that technically racist at that point? Or, or, What's the or that? I mean it's, it's to play a character. It's to, I'm being that character and I and I've assigned this voice to them. If the voice is like racist, I would say so. I what mean, like, what defines yeah, it as, as racist at that point? Like hyperbole? If it's if it's hyperbole, if it's it's to show how dumb they are, to show up the level of evil that they are to show whatever because like for example the mammy character if I use a black woman's voice I'm basically using all of the negative traits and that stereotype as sort of characterization mm-hmm. similar to that of a black face similar to that of you know because I'm not certain I use it in that sense I mean of course sometimes the people I play with will think it's like oh I can't believe you chose that accent I think that's funny I would just but I'm just it. like this is the voice that I assigned with this character and because I have this one I had well a samurai or whatever and I was just like okay I'm just gonna do See, that's the thing is that, like, that, the voice that I'm assuming, and again, I can't, I'm not there, and I really not want you to try it, just in case, um, <laughs> I don't think that's funny, because it's just, like, that's not based on anything, the only joke to it is the voice itself, right. and that's just, that's not enough, it's a, it's a pinata, and mm-hmm. that's, that's, again, it's not enough. Like, again, with the French, like, you have, like, the other intent, like, this is a real person that does this, and that's kind of why it's funny, mm-hmm. and again, like, why Asian or accents can be funny is if it's based on someone that you actually know, if it's your family yes, member, yes. that's why that's funny, but when it comes so, to... So, like, if it's an impression, right. it's one thing versus... Yes, exactly. Well, and if it's an impression of someone that you know on a personal level, In the impersonating sh- yes. someone who does your nails at the nail salon... Not so good. Not cool. Because, like, you don't, you don't know them, like... You don't know if they would one understand the jokes that you're making. You don't know if they would like appreciate that. Like that's. I feel like if if you're walking the fine line, it's better to just avoid it. Okay. Or else, I mean, okay. Here's the thing. You but can I say you can say what risks. you want. You can say what you want. You well, can yes. make the jokes that you want. You just have to know that words have consequences. No, exactly. Actions have consequences, and you have to be prepared for the backlash. Mm-hmm. Yes. You have to be prepared to be fired from your directing job, and knowing that that is a possibility that I could. Mm-hmm. And you have to, like, yeah, right, just be prepared for it and be ready, like, not to get upset that somebody would react like that. Yeah. Right, and be ready to be called out on it and be ready to acknowledge the fact that you did something wrong. That's the worst. Well, when, when it's, what, what if it's a matter when you don't, don't, when you don't think it's that bad, though? When you say something, it's not about what you who, think. Are, who are you to say that? Yeah. It's about yeah. the person that you're impersonating, the person that you're affecting. Intent, intent really has no meaning. It's all about uh, effect. Effect, yeah. Wow, guys, we're so low. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's, it's hard to swallow because, like, it just doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem like it does anything, especially because it, you know, it's harmless in our in our world and everything. And, you know, honestly, maybe that is what it is. It, it, and you saying it specifically, but that echoes and that comes from a different echo. And yes. that's that's the problem is that you kind of have to stop it at a small level in order to get to the big level because that's, that's what the big level is. It's made of all small thoughts and all, all consciousness. So it, I don't know, it's hard, and it's also just hard to swallow because, like, if you don't think about it from, you know, a way that's just super recent, like, you just don't believe it, because everything else that you've known, everything else that you've lived, everything else that you've experienced, has said it's fine, like, what's the big deal? It's just it's just go. going through your cognitive dissonance. It, it's a cognitive dissonance, yeah, for sure. And, you know, in the same way that I think people should be more sympathetic and able to accept growth and change and apologies and moving forward, you know, we all need to accept being wrong. Because, you know, kind of mentioning, too, if we don't allow people to grow and become whatever, that means that you need to do everything you can do to cover it up and lie about it. Mm-hmm. Because there is no redemption. There is nothing else other than death or survival. Or and taxes. Like that. And taxes. Yeah. Cockroaches and Cher. Cockroaches and Cher. Fucking murdered a cockroach last year, though. Did but yet Cher remains. <laughs> <laughs> there was a... Okay, so we used to live... We, like, moved to a different part of Orlando after I graduated because we didn't have to be near my high school anymore. We could be near Disney. Um, and there was a cockroach that, like, lived in our kitchen in our old house. I, I named him. His name was Cornelius. 
And during the, during the day, you know, like cockroaches are like nocturnal. They would like you know sleep. But at night, he would always be in a different part of the kitchen. So he would like come down to like you know heat up the heating pack. He would like be in the microwave. He would like open uh, like a drawer to get like a fork to eat like some ramen. He would be in the drawer. Like he was just always where you least expected him. And it's Florida, so these bugs are, uh, are huge. They have wings. Yeah, mm. it's not fun. It was not fun. The yeah. house we lived Cornelius! in Cornelius was it was a former frat house. So, <laughs> so we got roaches. Not good. Did you like all. blacklight that place? Uh, we were scared too. <laughs> yeah, I would power clean it with a hose. Yeah, yeah, and the AC was broken when we first moved yeah. in. It was Typical. Just, uh, new house. AC was also broken, but so much better. Not to end on a horrible note like Florida, <laughs> but we are running. Near our end, so we should probably close it up. We should, guys. Oh, um, I wish look at you. I wish, I wish things just ended naturally sometimes, right, like my grandma. And on that, my grandma had dementia. My grandpa had dementia. Okay, do you think I don't deal with that shit? Don't high five. I'll forget. <laughs> okay. Well, goodbye, everybody. Thank the you. The double takers. We are gonna. We're gonna. I think we're gonna do another podcast after Later RTX. in the week we'll after RTX to, to we'll talk see. about our experience. They don't even know about that. So be ready. For a double whammy RTX, the double taker podcast yeah. second take setting, yeah, and we'll we'll have a more focused uh, uh, yeah we'll conversation. Focused conversation. Yeah. Uh, no mention of Florida, please. Um, Goodbye. <laughs>